There's been certain um, news and developments going on in the internet about the uncertainty of the sequel to uh, Dean Israelite's 2017 Power Rangers movie. That uh, they didn't meet uh, with great criticism amongst the critics about the whole issue of um, one of the characters turning a corn bean a lesbian to please the SJW de demographic and that the whole other issue was surrounding its um, rating which was a PG-13 and in Russia and Germany it was rated a 18 due to its um, social issues and all sorts of other stuff and, and that. However, the PG-13 has been plaguing Hollywood for quite a certain length of time now when it comes to rating its films and that. So, the, it all resonated back in 1980s with the film uh, Portal Guys, which uh, had a uh, scathing PG rating. And that which people thought it was by right they should be a 15 or an 18 due to the fact it is supernatural um, themes and that. But um, Steven Spielberg, the producer of the film, said it, it, how about regulating a new rating system called PG-13 which films contains these supernatural beats and whatever should be in a PG-13 category. Like with the Anna Jones uh, film, which was the first film uh, which is over the does some um, themes and that, and the, the since then most some um, action films like the Expendable series and um, Robocop and Total Recall. Which was uh, remakes of the um, 1980s property, and that that had the violence toned down and watered down to be given a PG 13 rating, and they didn't do as well as they hoped, and that and. And the likewise with the Expendables films and that, the which has suffered the same problems in the PG-13 status quo. And putting all the issues at the side then that, the Power Rangers film had a one million bu budget. It, it, so, so far managed to rake 140 million gross um, worldwide. It's all it failed to connect in um, China that but the whole problem is China had the the problems with power rangers in the past because it's is it's of the phrase it's morphing time and the and the the title of this series which was Mighty Morphin Power Rangers it, it, and that um which uh, which is a big no-no in China due to the fact it's, it's, it's drug-related references. So that is, is dropped in that. So in China, it's just the repackaged as Power Rangers and that. The film has failed to reconnect in that. It's yet to be released in Japan, which is the home of um, uh, Hente and um, Anime. In the hope to God it connects w w w with it to do to see if Power Rangers was sp span off the show uh, of of the Super Hentai show whatever its name was it is in the ninety eighties and that, and that which the the nineties TV show often used um, stop footage and had their actors. Uh, the, the redubbed the uh, voices when they comes to the scenes in the Power Rangers outfit and that. In the later se seasons, the, when 
Hi, I'm Saban and Shuki Levy got the rights to the series. They start doing their own scenes with the with the stunt actors in the suits and that, and that um, and that became a foreign staple into the ninety five Power Rangers the movie. The which was uh, didn't have a great uh, um, special effects budget and that, but with the Power Rangers twenty seventeen one, it did have um, a spectacular budget uh, due to the fact it was um, produced and released by Lionsgate, and the Power Rangers the movie from ninety five was uh, distributed by Fox and that. And with the uh, Zords in this uh, version was infinitely way better than I hoped to got the the thing expecting. I thought it was gonna be you know no they're gonna do a Power Rangers ninety five uh, movie all of again use of a uh, of a uh, boring CG and all that lot. And, but um, James Rolfe and Matt Matai did say in the review the the whole way of this slotting in the Power Rangers theme tune which the Zords come out in unison and that did, did um, land them um, perfectly in that. But uh, but uh, the many critics um, did the um, panic unfairly by giving it poor reviews on Rotten Tomatoes and other metro crit critic sites. Um, Matt Jabba, known as Monday Matt, he gave the film a full appraisal and that uh, said he, he enjoyed the film, he's seen it quite a few times because he grew up. Uh, in the in the nineties, watching the TV show and that and etc. That that grown me an attachment to it. even the likes of um Jeremy Jans and Chris Stockman and um, Angry Joe. All of them did give the good um, reviews of on it. But the 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 whole aspect of using the Krispy Kreme gag landed pretty damn well in the film, which I thought was quite clever and unique. But only criticism they had in the, about the film was Elizabeth Banks. Some of them thought that her performance as the titular villainess and Rita Repulsa what was um, played for laughs and that and etc and didn't take it too seriously in that there was problems with the film like the the first half was to the whole coming together a bit of the all of them uh, getting the these um, coin things shaped like the this in different colours and that and, and go through a tedious um, overuse um, cliche training montage in order to become the heroes and this they, they're not have made a mistake they're not worthy blah 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 and the whole connection between Brian Cranston Zordon and that Grey Montgomery's character did um, connect it the 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 where they challenge uh, each other and that which that scene did was pretty damn well, but uh, to do the surprising performance was from R.J. Siler as um, Billy Cranston as that. That he was a kid that was dealing with um, autism and, and that that to give him abilities that a normal person can't have, like solving 
equations uh, and that. He he did um, uh, prior to the, uh, getting the role, he did um, re research it pretty damn well. So he projected that well and that. But I feel the problem with the film, in the nutshell, was the cameos of um, uh, Jason David Frank and Amy Jo Johnson, which was reduced as standing there holding up a camera for the phone in front of a green screen and the, the that was that that was the scene they didn't say uh, anything like that I was expecting um image says it's more phenomenal as a call back to the way she plays the Kimberly Hart back in the 90s in comparisons to Naomi Scott plays the character it in in the film and that. But um the Dean Israelite, the director of um Project Almanac and this film he, he put it down to the whole PG PG thirteen rating and that. But is it the I won't rule out a, if there isn't a potential for for not having a sequel. That's early times yet. Yeah, you you got to wait to see how the film does well in the, um, the digital and physical market and on cable and television in North America and satellite in Europe and that see uh, how it fares w well in that. But many uh, critics constantly put it in the, the, the knife in uh, and try to uh, try, uh, s slash all hopes of a sequel and that, which the um, Lionsgate did say that it was going to span into six movies and that and a shared cinematic universe like Marvel and um, DC is, is doing at this moment because it is an in thing and that to gain so many film properties and that to, to do crossovers and that it does work well in um, comic books as, as such but they did try in um, horror with uh, Freddy vs. Jason and at some point there was thoughts of a uh, 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 of a Hellraiser and Chucky crossover but that was that got ditched and that and things such a <coughs> However they still lightened the, the tunnel with this Power Rangers 2017 movie. But yeah, it's still going to give it <coughs> another rewatch. Pardon me. And then do a follow up review to see what I think of it. But what I think there will be hopes for a sequel. Um, probably yes, and such. So this is me, Frankie Cross Mills, where you are in the world, you have a great um, night and don't forget to follow me on Twitter uh, and Facebook and, and I'll be sharing th this video onto those pages and that. To keep up to date what's new, please press the bell to get notified and that and uh, we'll do more re reviews and um, Ouija board <laughs> experiments is when time to come and that and yes yeah, so I will be doing Destiny 2 Let's Plays when I get Destiny 2 Two and that I'll be do, doing that on my Vanguardians of the Galaxy channel. I'll be posting a link to that um, 
until then I'm here to serve the world and have a great um, night and fairly well.